All right, guys, so in this problem, we have air entering into a compressor. We have the pressure, the temperature, and the volumetric flow rate at the inlet. And then at the exit, we have just the pressure. And we also have the heat transfer and the power going into or out of the compressor. And we're told to neglect kinetic potential energy here. And we can ideal this, we can, sorry, we can model this gas as an ideal, as the ideal gas model. And we have to determine the final temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So here we have our schematic. We have the inlet and the exit here, just one on either side. So what I'm thinking is because we have the power, we have the heat transfer, and we also have the temperature and pressure on the first side, we should be able to find the temperature on the right side via using the energy balance equation. So in other words, we will use the properties on the left side here to get the enthalpy on the left, and then we'll solve for the enthalpy on the right side of this compressor. And then from there, we can interpolate for this temperature. So first, let's start by writing out our energy balance equation. So if we simply neglect kinetic and potential energy, the energy balance equation for a single inlet, single exit control volume can be shown as here. We have zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate. Again, you have one inlet, one exit, so m.1 equals m.2, which is just m. dot times the difference in enthalpy. Before we start plugging in what we have, notice that this heat transfer here is per unit mass, and we actually need it on a per unit time basis. So we're going to find the mass flow rate, so we can multiply this by the mass flow rate, and then the power also should be converted into the proper unit. So to find the mass flow rate, I'm going to actually use the ideal gas law. The pressure times the volumetric flow rate equals the mass flow rate times the gas constant times the temperature. Notice I'm using the subscripts of 1 because I have the temperature and pressure at the inlet. I don't have the temperature at the exit, so it's just easier if you use the left side. So now we have to make sure that our units are consistent when we use the ideal gas law equation. So we have 14.7 PSI, but it's more proper to use feet in this equation here because you also have the volumetric flow rate in feet cubed per second. So let's go ahead and convert that. So there, our pressure was 14.7 pounds per inch squared. And now we have to multiply that by 144 inches per square foot. This should yield 21, 16.8 pounds per square foot, or PSF. So now we can go ahead and start plugging in what we have here. So we have the pressure times the volumetric flow rate equals the mass flow rate times the gas constant. So we'll have to solve for the gas constant. So just recall that the gas constant equals the universal gas constant divided by the uh, molar mass, in this case of air. So the universal gas constant is 1545, and the unit for it is pound force times foot divided by pound mole degree Rankine. And the molar mass of air is just 28 0.97 pounds per pound mole. Also, I'd like to reiterate that the mass on the mass flow rate, or the uh, molar mass here, is actually pound mass. I know it can get really confusing with English units. So now if we just do some unit cancellation, the pound mole and pound mole can cancel out, and you're left with 53.33 pound force foot per degree Rankine pound mass. Now you have a pound force on the top and a pound mass on the bottom, so we're going to have to break it down another step. So if you remember that a force is just mass times acceleration, Newton's first law, so we're going to have a pound mass times acceleration, which would be feet per second squared, and that's your pound force times feet, and we're going to divide all of that by degrees Rankine, pound mass. And now you can see that the pound mass can cancel out on the top and bottom, and you have feet squared per second squared times degrees Rankine. And if you'd rather have this unit in BTU, it's just equal to 0 0.06855 BTU per pound degree Rankine, and that'd be pound mass. Now, personally, I'm going to use the 53.33 square feet per second squared over degrees Rankine, just because it's already in more simplified units. So I'm going to plug it in, and we're going to have 
53.33. That's, again, feet squared per second squared degrees Rankin. And now I just multiply by the temperature. So the temperature was 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be 540 degrees Rankin. You just have to add 460 degrees. And if you solve this whole equation for m dot, the mass flow rate, you'll have that m dot equals 1.323 pounds mass per second. So now let's try to go ahead and plug into our energy balance equation. So we have 0 equals the heat transfer, which was 9.7 BTU per pound. BTU per pound, and I'm going to specify it's actually pound mass. And it's negative because it's exiting the system. We're going to multiply that by the mass flow rate, which is 1.323. That was pound mass per second. We're going to look for a BTU per hour. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this by 3,600 seconds on the top, divided by one hour on the bottom. Now you see the seconds and seconds cancel out, pound mass and pound mass cancel out, and you have BTU per hour. And from this, we're going to subtract the work, or sorry, the power, which is negative 90 horsepower, which if we want to convert into BTU per hour, there's actually 2545 BTU per hour per one horsepower. So a horsepower is actually pretty huge. And now if you cancel this out, you'll just have BTU per hour. And now we have to add the mass flow rate, which was 1.323 pound mass per second. We're going to add a conversion factor to get this into hours. So we'll have 3,600 seconds per one hour. Cancel out those seconds. Now you have pound mass per hour. And now we just have to find the specific enthalpies. So for example, at the inlet, you have 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can just turn to table A22E, which is the ideal gas properties of air. So if we go to 540 degrees Rankin, you have 129.06, and that's BTU per pound. So we can plug that back in here. So you have 129.06 minus H2. And those, once again, were in BTU per pound. So now if you multiply that mass flow rate times the specific enthalpy, you'll actually see that the uh, pounds, or I should say pound mass, cancel out. And you're left with BTU per hour. And the heat transfer is in BTU per hour. And the power also is in BTU per hour. So now we can just solve for H2, because it's our only unknown here, and we'll have H2 equals 167.45 BTU per pound. So now we can use our H2 of 167.45 and go back to our property table and look for 167.45 in the enthalpy column. And you have a 167.56 right over here, so it should be a little bit less than 700 degrees Rankin. And if you actually use linear interpolation, you'll find that T2 equals 699.54 degrees Rankin. Now, if you just subtract 460 degrees to get it into Fahrenheit, you'll have that T2 equals 239.54 degrees Fahrenheit.